All, this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So just a quick heads up, there is pouring torrential rain outside. So if my network goes out or the electricity fails, then I will stop. So let's start a discussion. Today, I want to share some, um, some more discussion about the cardiac arrest for the for Damar Hamlin without actually going into the specifics of his case, but associated medical information. So not his case. It's not correct to talk about him directly. At the same time, I'm also going to share a study with you, which alone, it is actually published today. This study alone is a it's a surprising study for me. And shout out to Zira on Twitter who tagged me for this study. I will do a complete discussion of this study separately. But it is an important study that can provide some more context for the overall discussion today. So I want to summarize with this, the discussion, the whole discussion's basic summary. I think for the future the differential diagnosis of cardiac arrests will have to include additional causes of myocarditis by vaccine or by SARS-CoV-2 or by antibodies that are generated by the vaccines or SARS-CoV-2. I think that is an additional piece of information that will have to become part of differential diagnosis that will have to go in the cardiology books as well. This will have to go in pathology books as well. And this discussion is not for any anti-vaccine purpose or pro-vaccine purpose, but for looking at the myocarditis, cardiac arrest, and the further expansion in the disease pathologies. So my request to you as well is that in the discussion today, I would like you to participate in a more positive way instead of um, attacking each other. I would like everyone to be here. I would like no one is blocked. So let's just have a good positive discussion as if we are sitting in a cafe and we are all good, curious human beings, educated who are looking at things together. So with this, let's start. So Luffy, it's really raining outside, so Luffy cannot go out, but he wants to go out, and so he's going to be doing what he's doing. And Kairi just woke up, and I'm sure she's going to now bother me for the rest of the... <laughs> bother, she wants to sit with me. All right, let's start. It is Barbara. Yes, it is Luffy who is going to lecture us. He's already lecturing me from downstairs. And for those of the cool beans who are going to listen to this talk for the first time, they think the kitty is hungry and we are cruel that we don't feed them. For these two cats, there are three feeding systems available all the time. Two auto feeders for their dry food and one plate of fish that they like always filled in the morning, in the evening with water. That is always available. So Luffy is only bad mouthing me, nothing else. Okay, so <laughs> let's start with our discussion. First of all, this is the study. If I ever wanted to call a study a bombshell study, that would be this. It is really interesting. And even before this, let me very quickly give you the references. So first of all, this is drbean.com. Over here in the description, there is a link to drbean.com. This is the couple of weeks now that we are actually moving towards course-oriented selling. So we will not have access at $67 again at all. This gives you access to everything. We'll, we'll grandfather whoever buys now. And then after two weeks, as we move towards courses, we will just retire this kind of uh, selling model. So this is the last few days that we are doing this. Here is this 
to me bombshell study circulating spike protein detected in post covid 19 mrna vaccine myocarditis this is from i believe boston boston children's hospital cardiovascular this is an older thailand study cardiovascular effects of the biontech mrna covid 19 vaccine in adolescent this is not peer reviewed but there is a i believe peer review done as well this is a thailand study i've discussed it in the past this is my substack that i wrote for the situations like damar damar and we'll talk a little more in a second then there are some links about the commotio cordis there are some links about the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy then other reasons for cardiac arrest so i want to do that today the differential diagnosis and then some more things plus news both from cnn and fox about demar so my prayers for demar that he becomes recovered fully recovered and soon they did cpr margaret mckinnis said me the news that they did cpr for 10 minutes and then they took him to hospital but there is just so much news that you know those things i want to once again focus on the differential diagnosis so first one here this study deserves a complete lecture of its own i'm only going to pick up some parts of it to provide a point and that point is this according to this study it is actually published so from january 21 to february 22 is the study time and it just got published 4th of uh, january 2023 they say that in those youngsters not a, uh, adults youngsters who developed myocarditis after an mrna vaccine in these youngsters blood they found free complete spike protein so how did they find what are the tests they did all that detail is in here but they found s1 part but s1 part was bound with antibodies so it is not that their ant- body did not create antibodies antibodies were created s1 was bound with antibodies however free full length spike protein was able to evade the antibodies and they think that is the cause of myocarditis and i have discussed this in the past that the antibodies can connect with ace2 and sorry the spike protein just the spike protein can connect with ace2 and cause the disruption of the endothelial cell cause inflammation there plus as it binds with ace2 it creates a an impact in the balance of ace1 and ace2's function and so inflammatory function increases then we discussed this in the past as well that just the binding of spike protein to ace2 causes the nitric oxide dynamics of the cell to become dysregulated which cause vascular constriction or less dilatation and less relaxation which in turn can be dangerous for many tissues and this is exactly the same theory they have here the theory that they think they have negated is the after the vaccine the production of auto antibodies which cross react with cardiac tissue causing damage they in this study did not find that in the patients with myocarditis they found the full length spike protein circulating in the blood and they think that is what caused the issue now there are some uh, counterpoints that they have themselves put in here one of those is that even when they saw the myocarditis it was primarily or dominantly in boys than girls although the full length spike protein was seen in girls with equal volumes as well so if it is just the antibody the the full length spike protein then somehow it didn't do that damage to girls as much as the damage it did to the boys so it may be something else as well the second interesting thing that they found was that more than the adaptive arm 
remember the adaptive arm is the one the T cells and the B cells and antibodies and cytotoxic T cells more than the adaptive arm they found the innate arm to be overactive and producing more innate arm cytokines so they think the damage are two or the mechanisms of damage are two one the spike protein itself the full length itself binding to s2 as i mentioned before and second possibility of innate arm working more um, intensely causing cardiac damage now they also tried to figure out that why does this not happen so they didn't see this in adults so they tried to figure out why does this not happen in adults and their conclusion these are conjectures their con conclusions were number 1 maybe in the adults the body volume is more and so even if the same amounts of proteins are present antigens are present they just fall below the detection level when the tests are run they also think alternatively increased level of free spike compared with free s1 may be attributable to differences in renal clearance so as our kidneys remove the s1 and the spike protein it is able to remove s1 more easily because it is smaller part almost half size of the spike protein and it finds more difficulty to to clear out the spike whole spike so that may be the reason that full spike is found more than the s1 part then they say this finding suggests an age related capacity for handling vaccine introduced antigen so maybe in adults we can handle it the vaccine produced antigen better than youngsters and this may be dose that they have youngsters have more dose than the adults and that may be because of that they're not able to handle that extra dose and that then causes the spike to run around in the body and attach to heart and cause myocarditis then they say it is important to note that the majority of circulating s1 was bound by specific anti s1 antibodies indicating an appropriate immune response for targeting and clearing s1 so body did respond for s1 but somehow not for complete spike now they thought they had a idea about that as well and that was maybe actually let me show you that here in post -vac vaccine myocarditis the spike protein appears to evade antibody recognition so that is what they think they think that antibodies were produced correctly but spike protein just evade them then they say there is growing in vitro evidence in vitro that spike itself and can stimulate cardiac pericardial dysfunction and inflammation i've discussed that thus the spike antigen itself which evades antibody recognition rather than invoking immune hyperactivation may contribute to myocarditis in these individuals so we are not talking about the immune system attacking the heart but the spike itself attacking the heart that is the crux of this study small study 16 patients of myocarditis and 45 controls so not very big but very very interesting study so the other thing that was interesting for me the curiosity was that when did they take the the blood sample the same day the second day the third so within 11 days i believe of the vaccination and they found the spike to stay in the blood for 3 weeks at least s1 3 week bound to antibodies and free spike 3 weeks that tells me that if there is a possibility of spike related myocarditis that i've discussed the mechanism before then a younger person but more prominently so girl or boy but more prominently or dominantly boy after the vaccine must be careful for at least 3 weeks or more to make sure that they are healthy and their heart is not in jeopardy i want to connect that to this thailand study this study which showed that this was a school going age children 13 to 18 years 
who received this uh, vaccine and they sh they saw that these children had some of them had subclinical myocarditis so if you see here cardiovascular effects were found in 29.24% of the patients ranging from tachycardia palpitations myopericarditis this is important again for our discussion myopericarditis was confirmed in one patient after vaccination two patients had suspected pericarditis and four patients had suspected subclinical myocarditis conclusion cardiovascular effects in adolescent after biontech mrna vaccine included tachycardia palpitation and myocarditis the reason i'm talking about myocarditis and then they said this was subclinical the vaccination was the symptoms were mild and they all recovered within 14 days i would then remind you of the uh, children's hospital study here in us where they found that even up to 5 months or 8 months the remnant uh, of the the imaging abnormality for the myocarditis was observable in children so with all that data in the background what i wanted to show was how the differential diagnosis for sudden cardiac arrest especially in a youngster especially in athletic in athletic state could be so let me first read this is my um substack post so i'm just using it for my notes so first let's look at the cardiac arrest possibilities general high level so this is not a cardiology <laughs> intense um set of bullet points but coronary artery disease there are actually some children who have congenital abnormality of their coronary arteries and sometimes they collapse and have a heart problem while playing games cardiomyopathy so cardiomyopathy this is a condition in which the heart becomes weakened or enlarged leading to increased sudden cardiac arrest so this is where heart's muscle is in trouble and we've talked about the uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy or hoc yesterday where the interventricular septum just keeps becoming bigger and starts obstructing aorta then cardiac inflammation is going to be a very important one here as well and i'll discuss that a little bit in the part above so keep that in mind cardiac inflammation myocarditis commotio cordis can actually be in the risk of commotio cordis increases if there is underlying ischemic or inflamed condition of the heart present we also know that commotio cordis is risk increases as somebody's heart rate increases because the cardiac cycle time reduces but the commotio cordis window stays the same time and so the risk increases hypertrophic cardiomyopathy valvular heart diseases there are some children who have congenital abnormalities or have infections or virus or bacterial and can have cardiac heart damage pulmonary embolism there are for example sudden pulmonary embolism can cause a person to drop dead as soon as the embolus launches in the pulmonary trunks but pulmonary embolism aortic aneur aneurysm long qt syndrome and cardio uh, commotio cordis is sort of a not really long qt but the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia outcome looks very similar in both of these then substance abuse now if i want to go to the this is a general differential diagnosis now here i'm going to do some thinking with you about the the damar's case but i'm talking differential diagnosis so i'm not talking his situation the commotio cordis and i was discussing this with dr paul marik today he is my favorite doctor i hope you know that so i was discussing this with dr paul marik and he sent me this uh, paper and this paper 
is about the clinical profile and spectrum of commotio cordis. In here, what is interesting for me is the age of the people who get commotio cordis. Age of 128 cases, so this was cases up to 2001. 128 cases range from three months to 45 years. However, if you see here, median, where is it? Mean was 13.6, 8.2 years, median 40 years. 56 were 4% were 12 years or younger. So 44% were 12 years or younger. Mean age nowadays we say about 15 years. 28 years, or sorry, 28, 22% were 18 years and above. It is actually written in literature that fewer cases are seen above 20 years of age. And there is a reason for that as well. And I have that study uh, present. Here is that study. So if I go to the studies here, in here, if you see, Komosho Cordis plays a distressing role as a leading cause of sudden cardiac death in young athletes. Report, reported cases remain relatively infrequent. Less than 30 cases are reported each year. Children appear to be at the highest risk of commotio cordis. The mean age reported in the registry, so there is a registry called Minneapolis Registry for Commotio Cordis in the U.S. The mean age reported in the registry is 15 years, and very few cases have been reported above 20 years of age, very few. On the other hand, I wanted to show you this as well. This is the myocarditis or actually this one is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So that obstruction of the aorta because of the enlarged interventricular septum. So here they're saying inclusion, in conclusion, leveraging a claim-based data analytics technique, about 100,000 patients are diagnosed clinically with HC in the US, an occurrence which is less than the prevalence reported in systemic population-based diagnosis. Very high compared to commotio cordis. Then this is a good article in heavy.com. This is actually an article, but they refer to various studies. And here they're talking about what could be other reasons for sudden cardiac arrest in addition to commotio cordis. And so here they have various reasons, for example, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or then the second most common cause of fatal heart rhythm is the abnormal coronary arteries. I want to now go back here to my discussion. So commotio cordis, rare, usually produced that paper that Dr. Paul Merrick sent me. It is usually produced by smaller objects hitting a specific part of the chest, actually interior, middle of the left ventricle. And for example, baseball bat or cricket, uh, not bat, ball, baseball or cricket ball. Someone was analyzing today that the shoulder pad of the football players is the size of the sternum. So that's not a tiny object. That is a larger object in general. Secondly, as the children become, they grow in age, their thin chest wall becomes thicker plus stronger. And so after 20, it starts becoming much more stronger that it can take the impact and not develop commotio cordis. This is why it is more common in younger children. This is also why they suspect that in girls it is less because relatively girls, as they're growing, they have thicker tissue mass on the chest compared to boys. So if commotio cordis has these very specific observations that we have about it, that younger age, thinner chest, smaller object, then I believe that sudden cardiac arrests will have to include more than commotio cordis as a differential diagnosis. So what more can be added to this? 
and this is where my first point i think we the medical community will have to add cardiac inflammation either because of spike protein after vaccine or infection or autoimmune antibodies there are tons of studies that show autoimmune antibodies as well this study that i showed you kind of says that there were no antibodies but there are other studies that show it so autoimmune inflammation of the heart because of vaccine or infection so this will have to become added to myocarditis so here underlying ischemic or inflamed condition increasing vulnerability in this point any vaccine related inflammation will be a possibility so it will be actually incorrect of us to simply say any athlete falling will just be commotion cardiac and that's it or obstructive um you know cardiomyopathy and i don't know if you're aware that commotion cardiac like situations are usually diagnosed at autopsies after ruling out other reasons they're not diagnosed like this that it must be commotion cardiac and here is the diagnosis so underlying cardiac inflammation is important how much damage to the heart is also important so in my opinion vaccine related inflammation and this one this study just came out and this is not a study from some um less important um hospital i'm looking my apologies i'm looking for so mass general hospital boston so this is not a dismissible study and this shows spikes causing myocarditis we also know to immune disease is causing myocarditis so we cannot ignore that myocarditis can occur after a vaccine yes it does occur after infection as well but it can occur and here are the examples so that means for for sudden cardiac arrest we will have to add that as part of differential diagnosis and we'll have to figure out the ways to diagnose that i think um this is a correct complaint at this time to say that there are not sufficient um procedures put in place to make sure that the cardiac arrest diagnosis included anything related to cardiac inflammation for example maybe because of vaccine i think that should be included even to rule it out and i think we will have to include it okay so that one part of inflamed heart and the vulnerability for commotion cardiac seems more plausible than a hit and commotion cardiac but that is differential diagnosis it could be any then hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy we discussed this yesterday as well can cause sudden death more common than commotion cardiac and as i said 100000 per year commotion cardiac about 30 per year then congenital reasons for arrhythmia abnormalities for example wolf parkinson white syndrome and others and then there are many other as i read them over here so the in summary for me if you imagine i'm part of a panel of doctors who are managing a patient who has collapsed youngster had heart cardiac arrest heart stopped they did cpr they brought him in instead of just commotion cardiac i will have to say that here we should make sure that the cardiac system itself was not in an inflamed state and i'm sure that the doctors have access to the blood and they can see troponin levels and others now the question is if there is any troponin was that after or before so there are some markers that stay elevated for some days so they can actually try to figure that one out
So this is the discussion. I wish, uh, let me show you the news about Damar as well, just as a possibility of praying for him. So this is the latest update on NFL star Damar, Damar Hamlin, and this is on CNN. And I believe some folks are not, they don't like CNN. So I have here Fox News is, uh, news as well. Bills Damar Hamlin has shown signs of improvement still in critical condition, team says. So let's pray that not just him, but everyone is safe and protected. Him especially because he's going through this situation right now. And my thinking will be that we will, we medical community, should quickly update the protocols for ruling in or ruling out myocarditis caused by vaccine as we do for differential diagnosis of other, other types. And I wanted to show you one more thing. Sorry, I keep stopping and then go back to my links. There is a AHA journal or JAHA journal Sudden cardiac arrest in young population, not so unpredictable. It is a fascinating article to, to read. I have the link in the description to see what are the possible causes that can occur. So just in general. Of course, this article, I do not believe, contains latest. So this is 19 January 2019. So it is before the pandemic. I believe these kind of articles will have to add vaccine and SARS-CoV-2 related cardiac issues. And then these are the arrhythmias related to congenital cardiac defects. So with this, thank you very much for, um, for being here, for discussing this. My request to you is, these things are more um, attention needing things than throwing stones at each other or yelling at each other. So if you are watching this and you're going to make comments, see if you can make comments that would advance the discussion, add to what I have said, instead of just being um, rude to each other. So civil discourse will be awesome. So with this, thank you very much. Uh, so. Holy says malnutrition is a problem. There are many. So Margaret was discussing about Lyme disease. Uh, there are drugs, for example, hydroxychloroquine or quinines can cause long QT syndromes or torsade, not long QT syndrome, torsades. So there are many drug-related arrhythmias. There are many uh, infection-related arrhythmias. So there are many possibilities. But commotio cordis seems simplistic at this time. To just say that and move on. I think we should have to add others this to, to this as well. So with this, thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. In the description of this video, there is a link to drbean.com only last couple of weeks. And then we are doing away with our lifetime $67 price. We did not have that technology written before. We have written it. So within a couple of weeks, we will launch course-based um, fees, and these would be diff different. So if you want to take advantage of this, there is the link in the description. So thank you very much, and I would see you not tomorrow. So tomorrow I have two Zoom calls with patrons and with the supporting Substack members and supporting YouTube members. So we'll have two Zoom calls, one at 1 p.m. for the people on the other side of the pond, and one at 6 p.m. Pacific time for here. And we would do that every other uh, Thursday. So every other Thursday, I will be off because I'll be doing those discussions. These are more personal one-on-one -on -one type, not one-on-one, -on -one, but a few people and I discussing various things that we may not have a chance to discuss here on YouTube. So with this, thank you very much. And I would see you tomorrow. In the description, there are links if you would like to support this work. You can become a patron, you can use PayPal, you can buy me a coffee, or you can become part of Dr. Bean YouTube channel as well. See you day after tomorrow.